From the way his saga seemed over for good in Spider-Man, No Way Home, to the countless loose ends that may never get resolved, here's the real reason why the MCU replaced Tom Holland. The way his last movie closed things off definitely played a role because it gave us the perfect ending to Spider-Man's origin trilogy. Our wall-crawling superhero was first introduced way back in Captain America Civil War. He was still just a kid coming to terms with his power, but he got his first glimpse of real action when Tony Stark decided to drag him into the Avengers. Spider-Man Homecoming went on to establish Tom Holland as the MCU's official version of the superhero, and even though Tony tried his best to keep him away, he continued to play a role in the Infinity Saga, along with having his own origin story told across three films. No Way Home served as the ending to that origin story, and the way it closed out fully disconnected Tom Holland's web crawler from his tech heavy roots. A lot of fans complained that the MCU's Peter Parker was less of a Spider-Man and more of an Iron Lad, because there was a bit too much Stark tech finding its way into his stories. All of that came to an end with No Way Home, with Doctor Strange's final spell to seal off the multiverse and fix his mistakes leading to a shocking side effect. No one in the MCU knew who Peter Parker was anymore. With Aunt May dead and his slate wiped clean, Peter's now completely on his own, so it makes sense that the MCU's Spider-Man would call it quits. There's also the fact that Tom Holland's not too keen on playing the character for much longer. The British actor hinted that he's getting tired of the role. This came from an interview he gave right before No Way Home was released, and given it was the last film in his contract, people started to wonder if he'd be back to play Spidey in the future. Tom was kind of hesitant about it, saying that if he was still playing the superhero in his 30s, he'd probably have done something wrong. Look, I get it. He's already played Spider-Man in six films, including three solo outings, along with Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. You can see why he'd want to try something different. Now, it turns out that Holland's quote was taken out of context. He didn't mean to say that he hated the role, only that he wanted to give other versions of Spider-Man the chance to come to the forefront. Personally, Tom's rooting for Miles Morales to make his way into the MCU, or even Silk, who'd be the first female Spider-Person to make it to the big screen. That said, the MCU has kind of already replaced Tom Holland in one respect. For one thing, he's no longer the starry-eyed newbie who's out of his depth. When Spider-Man first debuted in the MCU, he couldn't help but be amazed at getting the chance to join the Avengers. The fact that he was a newbie kind of made him a stand-in for audiences and viewers, because his reactions really captured how we all felt while watching these movies. From referring to superhero alter egos as made-up names, to all of his wisecracks that broke the ice in tense scenes, Peter was the perfect audience surrogate. But he couldn't be an amateur forever, Spidey's seen it all over the past few films, and he's done a lot of growing up, battling it out with one of the most powerful beings in the universe. Getting Thanos snapped in the process and coming back to life five years later was bound to take that childish gleam out of Peter's eyes. The MCU needed someone else to fill the role of the teenage wonder surrounded by veteran superheroes, and that's where Kamala Khan comes into play. Iman Vellani did a spectacular job of portraying the Pakistani-American superhero in Miss Marvel, which ended up being one of the best-received MCU shows on Disney+. Now, Kamala has some pretty striking similarities to Peter Parker. Like, they're both teenagers who suddenly get superpowers and struggle with the changes they bring, and they both practically worship their own favorite members of the Avengers for Peter. It was Tony Stark, and for Kamala, it was Carol Danvers. You can see just how easily Miss Marvel can slip into Spidey's shoes here. Iman Vellani also has a dry sense of humor that's pretty different from Tom Holland's boyish one-liners, so it's not like she's just a copy-pasted female version of Peter Parker. Rather, she'll just be our new audience surrogate, while bringing her own unique flavor to the MCU as well. Kamala is set for her big-screen debut in The Marvels, where she'll be joined by Brie Larson returning as Captain Marvel herself, along with Tayona Paris reprising her Wanda Vision role as Monica Rambeau. But wait, what does this mean for old Tommy Boy? Is his version of Spider-Man gone for good? Well, not quite. Holland's return to the MCU has been teased a bunch of times, with Kevin Feige mentioning how he has big plans for Tom's version of Spider-Man. Also, Amy Pascal mentioned that they're working on a brand new trilogy for the MCU's Peter Parker. In case you don't know, she's the woman behind Pascal Films, producing practically every Spidey-related film we've seen this past decade. 
Apart from serving as producer for the entire MCU Spider-Man trilogy, she also produced Into the Spider-Verse, both Venom movies, and even an upcoming film featuring Kraven the Hunter. Clearly, Spider-Man is her bread and butter, so if anyone can give us hope for Tom's future as the web-slinger, it's her. However, one thing's for sure, there are zero Spider-Man films announced for Phases 5 and 6. Maybe Marvel Studios is trying to save the reveal for the right moment, but either way, it doesn't look like we're going to get to see Tom climbing up some walls anytime soon. Don't lose hope though, because there are still plenty of chances for Spider-Man to swing onto the screen. In fact, some insiders are reporting that he might show up in Phase 6, but it won't be in a solo film. Instead, the MCU might set him up to lead the Avengers in Secret Invasion. That's the second of the two Avengers films slated for Phase 6, and it'd make perfect sense for Spider-Man to step in and lead the team. After all, Tony was training him to be his successor because he saw something special in him. Now, if the rumors are true, Spider-Man won't appear in the Kang Dynasty. Instead, we might see him show up somewhere between the first and second Phase 6 Avengers films. The MCU often announces movies when no one is expecting them. Holland's own debut as Spider-Man was kept under wraps for years, so I wouldn't be surprised if we suddenly find out that Spider-Man 4 is going to come out during Phase 6. Of course, this won't be his only chance to make a comeback. Spider-Man's known for working with other New York-based superheroes, most notably Daredevil. In fact, Spidey and Daredevil share a mutual hatred for the Kingpin. Matt Murdock's already met Peter Parker in No Way Home, and with Devil of Hell's Kitchen finally returning to the MCU with Daredevil born again, I'd say the stage is set for an epic crossover. Now, I highly doubt that Tom Holland's gonna appear in the Daredevil reboot, but his close relationship with Matt Murdock creates plenty of chances for the pair to work together in the future. Spidey also collabs with the Fantastic Four whenever a world-ending threat's on the horizon, so this superhero team's MCU debut in Phase 6 could very likely give us a glimpse of a grown-up Peter Parker. The point is, there's no shortage of films that Spider-Man could appear in. Remember, there wasn't a single Iron Man film in Phase 3, but Tony Stark was obviously still a central figure, getting as much screen time as Cap, Thor, and the rest. All the signs point to Phase 6 doing something similar with Spidey. The MCU might team up films like Avengers, The Kang Dynasty, while saving a dedicated Spider-Man film for later phases. Now, some of you might be wondering if there's any room for Spidey outside of these rumored appearances. Well, there are still plenty of loose ends from previous films, starting with that symbiote fragment that Tom Hardy's Venom left behind. It hasn't been mentioned yet, but something tells me the little alien creature is still running around, waiting for its chance to merge with someone in the MCU. What's more, we know for a fact that Miles Morales exists in this universe. His uncle, Aaron Davis, was played by Donald Glover in Homecoming, and he clearly mentions having a nephew in the neighborhood. That can't just be a coincidence, so could we maybe see Tom Holland's Spider-Man serving as a mentor to a young Miles Morales? Of course, even if that happens, it'll have to come much later. First, we're gonna need to see a mature Peter Parker for the very first time. Remember, every Spider-Man franchise up until now has shown us a young, inexperienced Spider-Man. We've never gotten the chance to see him all grown up in live-action films, and with a rogues gallery full of some of the best Marvel supervillains of all time, I'd say that there's plenty to explore before the whole mentor angle comes up. So from the hints from past films that suggest where Spidey might go from here, to No Way Home serving as a final chapter to Spider-Man's origin tale, this was why the MCU has replaced Tom Holland.